Welcome in YouTube. Today we're doing a little fabrication project, how to build a simple metal door with some simple metal hinges. Let's get into it. It's a beautiful day here in Houston, Texas, and I figured I'd get out here and work on something that I've been neglecting for some time. If you've been following along, I've been building this fabrication trailer for some time, and it's getting ready to be done, and I need to clean it all up and get it ready for paint. I built this box here just the absolute wrong way. 100% should not have built it this way. I put in sheet metal pieces on each side and just kind of welded them in. It's all just scabbed together very poorly, including the door that I put onto it. I had a side, I had two openings right here Already on it and then I welded everything solid and if you know anything about that we got some distortion so when I tried to put the actual doors in with the new hinges and handles nothing lined up latches even if I locked them you could still get them open ultimately I hated it so I took the gas axe to it and got it out we're going to frame out this hole a little bit better and just kind of re-square everything up re-flatten everything up where everything on the edges where I've had to beat on it with a hammer or from the welding and distortion nothing on this face of this is where it needs to be so in order for the door to fit right we're gonna put a frame an angle iron frame that just fits just so snugly inside another angle iron frame to make a door and then we're gonna go and put on some just some simple hinges that we're gonna just kind of scab together and weld onto this the angle iron is gonna sit like this on all the sides so one leg is gonna be facing up and one leg is gonna be facing out the other one's gonna be facing more like this, one facing in, one facing down, so that everything fits in like kind of like a door, you know? Being that this is probably not square, there's a lot of gap there. So to make that straight again, we're gonna make that angle iron. It's basically gonna cover up all the damage. We'll try to find the right length here where the end of our leg is facing out just to cover up what we got somewhere around, say like three and a quarter, 36 and a quarter, and what was this? 13. That's easy. 13 and a quarter, 36 and a quarter. 13 and a quarter, 36. Just write it down. Bring a notepad. Yeah, so all we got right here is just a couple 10 pieces of one by one by eighth inch thickness angle iron. I don't know if I'll need all of it. I also got a half sheet of four foot by four foot piece of 16 gauge. And all that was about 60 bucks for 20 feet and that bit of 16 gauge. And that's gonna be more than I'll need. So making a basic metal frame isn't all that difficult. As a matter of fact, we got a video on making a basic metal frame right here. It was a classic. We had the Bob Ross style video, if you will. We did it a few more times. A lot of y'all hated it. Some of you loved it. Let us know if you want it to be brought back. Go watch that video. It'll give you a lot of insight on using a chop saw or miter saw when it comes to cutting steel like this piece of one by one angle iron. It's a little bit different on angle iron than it is with square tubing and we'll get to that. We do have our two dimensions as far as our initial frame and it doesn't matter whether we've got our frame sticking up like this or like this with this tall boy being on the inside or outside the overall outside dimension is still going to remain the same with those one by one. So don't try to overthink it as we do one frame with the angle iron like this and then we do the other frame with the angle iron like that so it fits inside of each other. I think that makes sense, right? So I'm going to do cut these frames two different ways. We're going to do it the long way and then we're going to do it the faster way. So let's get into the long way. This is probably the first technique that I used when I started fabricating. You look at your plans, you take all your measurements and you cut all your pieces to those measurements, all square. First thing you do is cut that factory end off because I don't ever trust the factory end. Go ahead and nip it and then we can pull our measurements. When I go to mark my line, I like to mark on the spine of the angle iron because it's a lot easier to line up that piece with the saw blade when it's right on the spine or right on the edge of that piece of angle iron. And I also always cut my angle iron like this when I'm trying to make square cuts. Once I get all my pieces nice and square, now we've got to figure out how we're going to miter these. These are going to be mitered in a backwards direction, so it's kind of hard to see and make out where these marks go. It really messes with your freaking head, man, to make sure that you get them in the right spot. The layout is super crucial so you know that you got the lines where they need to be and you don't mess it up when you go put it onto the saw. You'll notice that even trickier is cutting these silly miters on the actual chop saw itself. On one side, you'll be able to see your line clear as day, line it up where you need to be and just nip that little end off. And then you go to flip it to the other side, now your mark is hidden. And now you could probably go on the inside and try to make a mark, but you still can't really see where that line ends up. You can try to maybe find a place to make a mark, but at the end of the day, all I do is line up the side of my saw blade to the tip of that piece of angle iron, 
and then I'm on my way. I'm gonna just kind of get by with that, and it usually does work for me. But once all the pieces are cut to a miter, we can lay them on the table, see what it's gonna look like. That's what I want. So I'll go ahead and clean everything up with the Scotch Bite Clean and Strip Pro Extra Cut, and it really removes all that mill skill really nice so that we get a good finish without taking any material removal away. Once I set up the Cyclone 263 Pi, we're gonna hit that easy feed, which is probably one of my favorite features on this actual machine. It just lets the wire feed for you. Anyway, we'll get our settings right where we need it, and then we're gonna start tacking this place. I know I have a fixture table here, but it's really not that complicated to put a frame, guys. Just put some pressure on it, get the square in there, get it tacked. Let's go see what it looks like. Now you guys can kind of see what I'm thinking here with this angle iron being facing outwards like this. That way I'll be able to mount a lid on here and there's some wobble to it because the box underneath isn't square. So it's likely I'm gonna have some gaps to fill, which is fine. We're gonna end up MIG welding all this, but I don't wanna clamp anything uh, like rigid to the box because it's not square. And honestly, about building frames out of angle iron, it's really not that difficult, but it does make you kind of scratch your head a little bit because it's kind of hard to look at. Like what angle goes where, flipping which way, you can get it done just the same. Now we're gonna build the frame the opposite direction with this angle iron. Now remember guys, it did tell you that we were gonna do one the fast way and one the slow way. We just did the slow way where we took each piece, marked it, cut it to length, and then we made two more cuts. So three cuts for sure on each piece. Now for this next piece, we're gonna go ahead and leave the saw at a 45 degree angle. We'll make our first miter cut and then we're just gonna flip and rotate so every piece only needs one cut. And you'll see that trick on the same video on cutting square tubing. It's just a little bit different when it comes to angle iron. It's just weirder to look at and how you mount it because it's not all four sides anymore. We know our saw can only miter one direction so we needed to figure out which side to cut. So it's either like this side, which was kind of what we just did, or we flip it this direction so that we see that our miter isn't going into the spine, it's coming off to the edge of the leg. That's kind of the difference. Instead of cutting into the spine is that backwards way, cutting into the leg will give you the cut that we want. I don't even need to lay out this first cut. I don't trust a factory end anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get everything nice and squared up. I think I gotta level my jack in the back real quick. I'm gonna get my safety on. Splish splash, let's take bath. Okay, so we got our mitered end, right? We made the one cut, and then we'll measure what we need, which is 11 and three quarters is the total length I need. Right there, All right? And then we need to make sure that our miter is on that same side going inward, just like this. So I'm gonna take that mark that I just put on the spine there, match it right there. It should be mirrored that of the other side. The biggest problem now is as I feed it into my saw and I go put it down, you can see that miter's not going that direction. So what do you do? You gotta flip it. You gotta flip it, but you can't see it. So what do you do? You gotta transfer your mark. You gotta take that mark that you made, you gotta run it up and around so you have something to reference. If you can get it from this spine to the top here, then you can make your miter cut. That's my length, that's where my saw lands. Do that, cut it. So I did not think of that compared to square tubing where you could flip it another way and you wouldn't have this backwards cut or you could still flip it the other side. Now we don't have that luxury. So we are going to have to rotate it again. This is the kind of the nuance between angle iron and square tubing. I gotta get cutting back out towards the leg again so I can have the proper miter cut. So I'm gonna just aim for the corner of that other cut so I don't waste too much material. Something I did not think about. But no problem, we can still. But that's it guys, that's how you'll end up doing it just a little bit quicker instead of having to cut each piece to length and then cutting each miter and hopefully not taking away too much of the overall length. You just rinse and repeat on the prep and then we can kind of see what we're working with here. Everything's now gonna fit on the inside of this. It looks like I got just a little bit of a gap on pretty much everything all the way around. I got somewhere around like a 332 inch gap, but that's okay. That's why I like working with metal and not wood because I can fill that in. It looks like I got those little bits of gaps, so I'm going to recreate those little bits of gaps on the actual fit itself. I'm not gonna squeeze everything to this because I found that that just gonna make things just a little bit tighter than I really like it to be. I take part of what I said back. I'm not gonna take it off the top here. It's already here. I'm gonna do my favorite form of fabrication and that's use my eyeballs. 
and trust my heart. Oh, my heart's not gonna get it square like this. The beauty of a plan is that it almost always changes. Let's see, if it doesn't fit, it's gonna be because I put those tacks in a freaking corner like a dingleberry. Yeah, I got those tacks held, holding me up. So I gotta tack the outside here and then go in there and clean up those corners. Let's see if that did the trick. Oh yeah, dude. I felt scared, dude. Like not a lot of wiggle. Like I don't have a lot of play in it. That's what I wanted. Now we just gotta put a solid piece in. Once we have our two pieces of frame that fit together well, we're gonna go ahead and pull a couple measurements and take that 16 gauge sheet metal that I talked about earlier and cut a little piece off. Probably be faster just to use a cutoff wheel, so I'm gonna use this Cubitron 3 from 3M with the arbor already on it to make some quick cuts on this sheet metal. Then bring it over and deburr it with the Scotch Brite wheel. Get everything cleaned up, slap that sucker in there, get it tacked in, and then we're gonna just go ahead and weld everything up solid. What I'm gonna do is just clamp everything down and bounce around corner to corner, do a little bit of welding here, a little bit of welding there, get it all done so as we can prevent as much distortion as possible. Once it's all welded, we gotta blend it all down because if these welds are there, they're probably not gonna fit the way I like them to because those welds are gonna be in the way. So we're gonna remove them with the 3M fiber disc. This 32 plus fiber disc, just knocks these welds super flat. And as soon as it gets down to the base metal, you can see clear as day and you can go ahead and stop. Once they're all blendy blended nice and clean in there, we can go check and see how it fits up on the trailer. And there you have it. That's gonna be our simple door flange kind of setup. This is gonna be able to sit right over our hole and it's gonna basically correct any of those issues. We're gonna cover up the problems with this nicer looking situation. It's all square, it's all blended together. When I told you earlier we wanna save a little bit of room for Jesus, Jesus is actually distortion or shrinkage in, when it comes to welding stuff out like this. Now it fits even better because I left that little bit of space. There is no wiggle room anymore in this part. We're gonna to have to move the equipment and the welding machine out there have a long enough extension cord for this so i'm gonna have to run it off a generator ironically right outside my shop we're gonna get to that and also put on some homemade hinges all righty all righty we're gonna mix a little relish with our ketchup today i got the lincoln ranger 330 mpx cranked up and we're gonna be turning up the everlast cyclone 263 pi that we were just running inside i've got my Flange here already tacked in place. We're ready to rock and roll. Everything should be good. Again, I'm not really super concerned about the location of this because none of this was square to begin with. Take these clamps off. Now this part here has the worst gap on the inside here. And I pushed it all the way over to this beam so I can basically just just fill all this in over here. But it's a lot better now than it was now that this door can fit on there. Are we gonna go ahead and fashion the hinges that I'm looking to do? I'll pull the handle, if I have one. Dinkelberg. Dinkelberg. And it'll drop to this point here. Now on to the custom hinges. It would have been probably a lot easier, maybe not cheaper, but definitely a lot easier to just go ahead and buy some hinges. But I digress, we're gonna build some anyway. I'm gonna pull some scrap out of my plasma table, some quarter inch plate, these little round pieces, I think will work good. I'm gonna cut a couple of these in half. Get them all cleaned up, no burrs on them, nice and flat. And then I need this round stock to go through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch it, put a punch mark in there, get the drill out, start drilling it out so that I can fit my drill punch in there again, nice and snug so that I can kind of transfer that mark to the other one so that both of these pieces are as identical as I can eyeball them. And then we're gonna make this hole bigger so that the piece of round stock fits in it. Once the piece can fit in it, I'm gonna go ahead and make a 90 degree bend. That 90 degree bend is where those pieces are going to sit. And then I'm going to weld a little washer on the end here. This washer is just gonna keep those pieces from coming off. So that's where it's going to attach to the box, but I need to make one more bend so that I can reach the door. So we're gonna put this other 90 degree bend in where it is. I pretty much eyeballed all where these bends need to be. So we're gonna go ahead and tack on these hinges and see how it looks. All right, now these hinges are tacked on. You can do hinges a number of different ways. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. You can use different types of plate configurations, tubing if you wanted to, pipe. You can use different hinge points. A bullet hinge is a really easy one you could buy on Amazon for a lot less time than it took to make these. And while it does look pretty good, the door is in a good spot. I don't even know if I need a latch right now because the sucker's freaking locked right now, unless you use its key. 
And then it opens wide. I do like that these hinges open up so that I can have this door drop all the way down instead of hitting this, which I thought was gonna happen. That was a happy little accident. But I can get in here now and mess with stuff and still be able to reach without this being like way over here. So that was cool. Did only leave everything tacked because I do want to fix. I do want to fix that. But other than that, this thing is exactly what I was trying to make as far as a prototype goes. I still have to weld everything solid, fix that little bit and make some sort of latch so that I can, you know, lock it up instead of using the, the old key here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm happy to get this done. And finally, this trailer is coming to an end as far as the fabrication. I just got to get it cleaned up and ready for paint. We'll see you guys on the next weld. Eighth inch uh, thickness angle iron. I don't know if I'll need all of it. And then I also got a half sheet of... <laughs> Rose bushes. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me.